What's up everyone? Welcome to the live stream. We'll be starting up pretty shortly, so just sit back and relax. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so as I have tons of awesome content and videos coming. Before we start, please read the rules and guidelines in the video description. It helps the stream stay focused and encourages a positive environment. Also say hello to the channel moderators who will be making sure that these rules are followed. Hello folks, it's Friday evening in New York City and it's also rush hour. I'm going to do something today I haven't done in a while and that's walk between Lower Manhattan and Queens. Right now you see the PATH train station at the World Trade Center. All these people are taking the PATH train into New Jersey. In fact, I just came from there. I made a few videos in New Jersey. I think you're gonna like them. 
but instead of commuting to New Jersey like these people are, I need to get to Queens. Right now it's uh, about quarter to five and it's chilly out. It's 39 Fahrenheit, four degrees Celsius, but very comfortable inside this shopping mall. There's a good place to observe people if you want to uh, watch all the people going towards the train but we'll actually see the action on the streets. Right now, the World Trade Center shopping mall doesn't seem too busy, just with uh, people going home. All the Christmas decorations have been removed. There's now a gelato stand in the middle. And I think they're going to construct something else over here. North Sandman says, holy tri-state area, it's really busy. Yeah, and I came from New Jersey too. I was just in uh, Hoboken and I took the train over here after spending a good amount of time in New Jersey. So. I'm going to show you the way that is most efficient to uh, get back to Queens because it's so cold outside. As a commuter, you don't want to uh, go out into the streets for too long. So it's best for me to walk underground over to Broadway via the Fulton Center. I'll have a little bit more warmth going this way. Although for most of the walk back to Queens, I'll be outside. So this is just a brief little, uh, brief little convenience that I'm gonna have to uh, use right now. Maybe we'll even see some people getting off work over on this side on Wall Street. Even down here, it's chilly. Melissa, happy Friday to you as well. Now this entire trip should take about three hours. Google Maps says it's or so minutes, but I know I'm gonna to need to stop and observe some stuff and point things out, so it's gonna take longer than that. Plus, if we stop, of course it's gonna take longer. Valpair, obvious Sean Valpair with one euro 99 for the underground ticket. Thank you so much Valpair, I appreciate it. I may need it because the PATH train, for some reason the machine took two fares on my card. I'm gonna have to have that. This rat skunk, 499 stay warm, my NY City rat friends. Appreciate it, rat skunk. So I wanna go this way, Day Street and Broadway. to go outside now. Maybe I'll even stop by the uh, New York Stock Exchange to see the people getting off there. That's the four and five trains at downtown Brooklyn. Downtown and Brooklyn, I should say. The next stop is Wall Street.
since I'm so close, maybe I should stop by Wall Street. Broadway and John Street. I'm sure many of these people are excited to be off of work right now to start their weekend. Bugger now, 23, how much do the train cost? Uh, a one-way fare is $2.75 for the New York City subway. But there's also unlimited ride options. There's also a um, senior citizen discount. Also, if you buy a new card, you have to pay a dollar for it. But you, once you have that card, you can refill it as many times as you want. Also, the PATH train system, which I just took from New Jersey, is a separate system, but the fare is still $2.75. Ian Murphy says the cash app is $1.75 MTA swipes. Uh, yes, it is if it, when they have the boost available, but I have not seen that boost available for about a week or two already. So um, whenever they decide to put the boost back on, we have to check what it is. They had it going for uh, quite a while, like a month or so, but they took it away now. Fresh Start saying, can you show me the One World Trade Center? Uh, not from here, I can't. But once I go down to Wall Street and then walk back up this way, I will since it's on the way back to Queens anyway. Zuccotti Park is over there, but they took away all the Christmas decorations. It's just the trees that are all lit up, but the Christmas trees are no more. Here's where it gets tricky. We need to go this way. William asks if there's a discount for disabled passengers for MTA. Uh, disabled. I don't think there is, which is not fair to be honest. I think it's only senior citizens and, uh, and students. Students need to get a, um, apply for a separate fare. Oh, thanks, uh, Adriana Rodriguez. You just watched my video I did with Here Be Bar about the Asian fried chicken. Yeah, that video is very fun to make and delicious too. Robin Davis says there are discounts for disabled, but check with the MTA. Yeah, definitely check with them and the website. Here we've got two beautiful buildings, the United States Realty Building and the Trinity Building next to it. Also a very nice sky bridge connecting the two. I'm walking next to the Equitable, bu Equitable Building, which started the setbacks in New York City. Caesar, you... Uh, work near there in the winter and it's brutal yeah this uh wind chill can be unpleasant sometimes i'm gonna come down this way since i think the view is better from pine street going towards the new york stock exchange
Oh, thanks, Scott. You found a form for uh, disabilities for applying to the MTA. Okay, so there are um, discounts then. Claire asked, can you go inside the stock exchange? Apparently you could, but they stopped it. Um, I think the last time I was inside that building was uh, probably like 2007. And I had to have somebody invite me inside. No one can just walk in there. It's a security concern. Here it is. We have New York Federal Hall over to my left, where George Washington took the oath of office to be the first president of the United States. New York Stock Exchange in front of me. But the stock exchange is uh, quiet right now. Then again, uh, stock stopped trading almost an hour ago. And it is a three-day weekend, believe it or not. Monday is Martin Luther King Jr. Day. So many people even took the day off earlier than uh, right now just to get a heads up on the weekend. And uh, over here on this corner is the J.P. Morgan building. We're going to go back to Broadway now and head back over to Queens. You can see that people here aren't really dressed up in the traditional suit, tie, and uh, dress pants anymore. Well, you'll need to like go somewhere like now. Also, what I noticed about the New York Stock Exchange is they took down the Christmas tree. Square Bear says stocks trade on computers now, no need for the exchange. That's right. But they still need the computers to process all the information. Um, most of the trading actually happens in New Jersey. Trinity Church building. This is the third version of Trinity Church on the same site. The first one burned down, the second one had weather damage. Dart says Alexander Hamilton buried in the church. Yes, in that cemetery over there you can find Alexander Hamilton's grave. Now we're heading back north on Broadway. I'll show the uh, One World Trade Center as I walk past it. Yvonne says a lot of people live in this area now. Yeah, they've been marketing it for people to live here. Used to be strictly for business, but now there's a lot of residences and uh, ba Battery Park City is very close to here. That's another area where people live. IP, thank you for the dollar, appreciate it very much. That's right, Robert, Alexander Hamilton and his son both died in duels. I was just over in New Jersey where Alexander Hamilton uh, had the duel and died there over by Weehawken. I passed right by it. And there's Trinity Church. The bells are tolling for 5 o'clock p.m.
need to go over this way because the other side is the bike lane. You can get seriously hurt if you're in the wrong place. Boom, Michael says people look defeated. Well, think about it this way. If you work the entire day, you come out to this cold weather, wouldn't you be a little bit uh, drained working so long? It's also cold out, so of course people are going to be a certain way. Also, uh, New York City cost of living isn't very good. One of the highest cost of livings to live in the world. We still can't see the One World Trade Center building yet. That will happen more once I cross by Fulton Street. Square bet saying uh, Cash Jordan says subways have been getting worse in the past year. Just in the past month, subway service has been declining a lot. Already the MTA has canceled a few lines which normally run on weekdays. Notably the B train, the Z train, the W, and I think even the 3 train too, they've canceled. And um, I have noticed too that the N train, which goes to Astoria, even that train is running on longer headways. I think last night someone was even posting that there was a 20 minute wait for the train when normally it shouldn't take more than 10 minutes for the train to come. So even on the lines that are still running, they're uh, being delayed. And the MTA is blaming it on staff shortages because people are getting sick and not showing up to work. So uh, I won't have to deal with that today because I'm walking back to Queens. <laughs> but I did take the train uh, into Manhattan today and into New Jersey. It was pretty smooth. We might be able to see the uh, World Trade Center building over at John Street. Thank you, Sascha, with 1999 Euro, a special support from Germany for the best YouTuber in the world. Sascha, I appreciate it so much. I'm very honored to uh, hear that from you. Appreciate it. I mean, we can kind of see it, just the corner of it, but the better angle is from Fulton Street. And plus, you have the scaffolding. Thank you so much, me. I missed the super chat. Let me scroll back, see if I could find it. Thanks to Mike Place for $4.99. Sorry I didn't get to it earlier. It's going really quickly. Appreciate the support. The temperature seems like it's really dropping now. It was in the mid 40s this afternoon. Now it's in the high 30s. And uh, here's where you get a full view of the World Trade Center building. Right here. That's the tallest building in New York. 1776 feet tall. If you're counting by the spire height. Much appreciated. Reginaldo Chizaki with 2790 Brazilian Real from Brazil. And uh, 
Over here is St. Paul's Chapel. This is also part of Trinity Church. This is the oldest building of religious importance in New York City. No, in, uh, in Manhattan, I believe. I think there's other churches throughout the uh, boroughs which are older than this one, but at least in Manhattan, this is the oldest. Rob say going to be really cold there tonight and tomorrow. Well, I sure didn't uh, prepare for it tonight. We're entering another area of Manhattan where there's a lot of workers. This is the Civic Center and Tribeca. Manhattan Municipal Building over there. We're going to see a lot of government workers. I'm sure the uh, new administration has a lot of workers that work here that need to adapt to the new policies of the new leadership. Thanks, Brian Bell with 299. Appreciate the support. Another look up at the World Trade Center. Tallest building in New York. And uh, former tallest building in New York over here, the Woolworth Building. A unique neo-gothic skyscraper. Joe is saying the windows at St. Paul's Chapel did not break after 9-11. All the windows of the building around it were broken. Yes, they called it the little chapel that stood because there was practically no damage to the building after the Twin Towers fell. And it was actually saved by a tree. There was a, I think, a steel beam that crashed into the tree near the chapel and that tree saved it from damage. I'll do a uh, front view of the Woolworth building once I pass by the, the front here shortly. There we go. Sir Bubba says, seems dead for a Friday night. This looks like Nashville on Tuesday. What's the deal, NYC, still on lockdown? Well, um, you have to remember, as I said earlier, it's cold out, people just got off work. You probably won't see them walking around the streets too, too long. They'll head right into the subways, they'll go right into the buses. Plus, it is a long weekend, so many people decide to take the, uh, the day off early. So you may not see everybody out on the streets at the same time. I'm one of the few ones that are actually walking around the city at this time with the uh, cold weather. I could easily hop on a train like everybody else. That's right, Scott. All the Christmas crowds are gone. No more tourists, pretty much. This isn't a uh, popular time to visit the city. If you want to come during this time, you could probably get some great deals for lodging. And here it is, the New York City Hall. This is where the mayor and the city council does its work. We have a new mayor now, Eric Adams. I saw him got inaugurated on New Year's Day, right after the ball drop in Times Square. 
Pat Sully says Manhattan's getting worse by the day, turning back into an empty slum. You know what? I kind of have the same feeling you are in that Manhattan is getting a little bit worse, but I don't really think it's as bad as people think it, um, think it to be. It is headed into the wrong direction, but there is time to turn it around. Crime levels are spiking in the city, and I feel that you know ac economic activity isn't as strong as it can be. But I get it. If people look from like two, three years ago, they'll see a much livelier Manhattan. Thanks so much, Eric Lineman with ten dollars. Saw your video with Hear You Bar for the KFC fund. Thank you so much, Eric. It was very fun to make that video with all the fried chicken. Appreciate the support. Raju is asking, where does the mayor live? Uh, the official residence of the mayor is Gracie Mansion on the Upper East Side. I've uh, visited that area before. Here's a very important street for Lower Manhattan. Several subway stops are along this street, Chamber Street. Once again, that's the Manhattan Municipal Building. We have a statue of civic fame at the top. That statue has a crown on top with five points signifying each of the five boroughs, one point for each of the five boroughs of New York City. This over here is the Sun Building. It used to be Models, but that went bankrupt and it's no longer at this location. That's right, Bob Kish, Michael Bloomberg, when he was mayor of New York City, didn't live in Gracie Mansion or didn't want to live in Gracie Mansion. Uh, Buman, I wouldn't really get into that just yet. I mean, this mayor is new to New York City and plus I don't really like talking about politics on this channel. Sometimes we say things that other people say, oh, New York City voters get what they deserve, or you voted this guy in, but really, sometimes people don't really have a choice. We have to live with our decisions, and that's what happened. Daniel Rivera says, that's the Canyon of Heroes I'm on right now. That's right, they call Broadway in this part the Canyon of Heroes. I remember coming down here, they were throwing a, uh, a parade for the Women's Championship, the U.S. Soccer Women's Championship. Emily Chandler says, does it feel cold out? Yes, it is cold out here, especially the wind chill. What I hate over here is this part. It seems that every single building, when they, whenever they have construction up, they allow an alternate path to the side of it to cross, but not the federal building. I guess the federal building is above the laws of New York City and uh, can't provide a good sidewalk for people, so they make everybody cross the street. Normally they have like a shed here and make, make people walk over there, but not here. IP says two bucks, make more videos of spots, tours, uh, don't venture. Uh, I went to New Jersey today, you'll be uh, surprised what I filmed. I don't think many tourists head over to New Jersey. Beep. That 
guy's got a good horn for his uh, e-skateboard there, or e-board. Claire's got a good question. What motivates you to go out and film on days like this when it's cold or raining? Thank you so much for your dedication to this channel. Well, it's something I really like to do. I've always loved enjoying exploring uh, different places or even my own community. It gives me a sense of purpose to show everybody. And just the people viewing right now, you're making me inspired to go out and do even more. And that's what keeps me going. Plus, it is a good way for me to see what's really going on in the world rather than have someone else tell me what is. Another look at the Federal Building. Hey Norma, welcome. It's dark out and uh, <laughs> barely lunch time for you. That's right. Thanks, Claire. Your kind, your work doesn't go unappreciated. I appreciate everyone giving me the support to keep going forward. Hey, this is Wharf Streets. They finally paved this over. This is great news. The last time I came here it was just a bunch of pipes and uh and construction and now it's all paved over. Finally there's progress. But down there there's still construction. They must have been working on Wharf Street for the last like four or five years over here. I would have said that that street wasn't worth doing anymore, but apparently it is. It just takes a lot longer than uh, what it's supposed to, like a lot of government projects. And uh, I've seen a lot of what happens in construction. It gets kind of crazy because uh, let me address the super chat first. Thank you, 499 John from Dublin, Ireland, who is the most famous person you have seen while walking around New York? Uh, let's see. The most famous person walking around, uh, I don't know, probably the, uh, the governor. Yes. Governor Cuomo or uh, the mayor. I don't really recognize celebrities too often in New York, to be honest but that's probably the most famous person I've seen. And uh, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, about construction. Yeah, a lot of stuff happens in construction. Like uh, they almost get done to finishing a job and then all of a sudden, oh, there's this, uh, this uh, sudden project that happened underground where we need extra money to uh, finish it so the city can you give us more money and usually the so far along the project that the city can't just say no and they'll get the contract and they'll just continue working and working that's what happens in the business of construction I think in uh, construction terms, they call it cost overruns. Oh, well, uh, our initial estimate called for like 10 planks of wood, but we actually need 100 planks of wood. Can you give us some more money to buy the extra wood? That's what happens.
We're almost out of Tribeca now. Once I cross over Canal Street in a few blocks, I'll be in uh, Soho. That's me. Oh my God. Hi. Yo. What's up? Hey. Wow. Another man. vlogger. Wow. That's right. <laughs> I That's don't know so, you. I, I never, never expect to see wow. you. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Have you fallen, you dog? Yeah? Yeah. Cool. Oh my God. I can't, <laughs> can't believe it, though. It's freezing too, man. It's so cold, no, I, I know. I your job, though. No, no problem. Seriously. It's tough to do this when the weather yeah. drops like Can this. Can we take a selfie, though, Yeah, sure. Let me take a selfie. Hey. I can't believe that. Action Me scared. says, who is this? Oh I don't God. know. Another vlogger. It's Inca Hustler. Okay. Inca Hustler. Let me take a selfie. Okay. I can't believe I've seen you here. Yeah. One, two, and three. Excellent. One, 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 two, three. All Yo, right. Yeah, I took it, man. Take it easy, man. Nice to meet you. Nice dog. to meet you. Nice to meet you, sir. Wow. Inca Hustler. Inca Hustler. All right. <laughs> You're on ya. YouTube or Twitch? Yeah, or? YouTube. YouTube. It's Inca okay. Hustler. All right. See ya. See ya. Oh my God. Give me uh, a look, look at that. See you guys there. Bye. All right. So uh, I didn't really get his channel name, Sinkla Hustler or Inca Hustler. Inca Hustler. Maybe uh, I'll look it up later. I don't even know if it's spelled with an I or a K or an S. Black Knight Radio says Stinka Hustler. Okay. Martin J says Inca Hustler. Oh, it's Inca Hustler. Okay, with a K. I N K A H U S T L E R. By the way, I can't believe I uh, passed by 368 Broadway and didn't mention it, but it's on the next block down there. That's uh, famously Casey Neistat's studio. Also, my friend uh, Jennifer O'Brien has an art studio in there now. Norman says, next time you see me, I'm going to ask for your autograph. We should have gotten it in Vegas. John says, I'm the most famous person you've seen in New York. Really? Okay, now here we are at the border of Chinatown and Soho. Over here we'll see a lot of these sidewalk vendors saying, selling faux bags. And clothing. This is where all of it happens. I wonder what happened with the boxes here. The wind is like pushing it all around. Cheryl says rush hour folks heading home for a three day weekend, that's right. And here's Canal Street, another important um, thoroughfare in New York City. 
This connects directly with the Holland Tunnels in New Jersey and also the Manhattan Bridge. Down that way is Chinatown. Oh, look at this. Look at that, huh? It's frustrating enough to drive and then you get told by the traffic cop that you can't make a right turn there. And if you look over here, there's no indication that you can't make a right turn there only until you get over here. So now that driver has to circle back around in order to get to Canal Street. That's why I don't like driving in New York. It's too congested. It takes forever to get somewhere sometimes. And then you have uh, unexpected things that happen like this where you can't make rights, you can't make lefts, you can't park here. You can't park at all because there's no parking. You get tickets. As a pedestrian, it's so easy. I can make a right or left wherever I want. And there's no such things as uh, one-way streets for pedestrians, pretty much. And a similar thing that happens with uh, personal, uh, personal vehicles too, like bicycles or e-scooters. Those are a little bit more flexible, but they still have their downsides. The biggest downside, I think, is uh, theft. You bring it somewhere, you gotta worry about it being there when you get back. Dimitri says, I think you once ran into Ginny TTY from Twitch. Yeah, I ran into her already three times when she was in New York. She's got even more followers than I do. Now we're in Soho, stands for south of Houston Street. And the neighborhood, I mean the, um, the street itself isn't nam named after Sam Houston, but instead it's William Houston. There was an extra U in his name. And it got shortened to Houston. Soho, busy area known for shopping. Although I don't really know how many people are gonna go shopping right now on a Friday night after work. Norma, is it pronounced Houston or Houston? Uh, depends who you ask, I guess, if no one's uh, familiar with it. Most of the time they're gonna call it Houston, I think. Thanks, Carlos Gonzalez, for a generous $19.99. Appreciate it, Carlos. Really nice to you. Thank you. Bonnie Deep say there's a Soho in Hong Kong, too. Oh, I did not know that. There's also a Soho in London which is also close by to Chinatown, coincidentally enough. JY says, uh, Texans will call it Houston here in New York City is Houston. The sa same thing uh, when you travel. You know, when I was in Boston, they have all these weird names for streets that uh, you don't know. Like, Wooster is actually Worcester. And uh, Winchester is Winster. All these stars and, and stirs. It's crazy. 
and over there they don't call the Italian sandwich a uh, hero, but they call it a hoagie or a sub. Actually, I think a sub is used here too, but it's not really uh, as freaking as hero. Thank you, Daryl Hardy with five bucks from Chicago. Love New York City. You were there past July for your birthday. It's like a second home to you already. And Terry Heggs, 1999 from Augusta, Georgia. I hope that your new year is prosperous and goes as it plans it, as you want it to go. Thanks so much, both of you, for your support. All right, here's Broom Street. This street is, uh, I think, one of the worst streets for traffic in New York. It'll take you forever to get down the street. And I've, uh, I've actually biked through here and lane split the entire way pretty much to the Holland Tunnel just to show you what it's like. It's on my channel. Oh, Barnabas saying Massachusetts word for here is a grinder. I thought it was a New England term, not just Massachusetts. And then I gotta bring up the uh, example again of in Australia, they call the uh, open-toed sandals or open-toed footwear thongs, not flip-flops. Meanwhile, the United States and the United Kingdom call them flip-flops. But they're thongs in Australia. So if you bring an Aussie over to New York City, I think a lot of people are going to be laughing when you go to Soho and say you want to buy some bongs. And uh, that is a totally different term in the United States and the United Kingdom because that is, uh, yeah, very thin underwear. There's some people out doing shopping now, surprisingly. I see some bags. Busiest, busiest block of Soho right here, between Spring Street and Prince. Brian D says ice cream trucks are out in the cold. They are. I've actually gotten ice cream from an ice cream truck in the cold weather. Wouldn't recommend it though. Anna is asking if you're supposed to get snow in the city. Um, I heard a few viewers saying that snow may be expected, but I checked the weather app on my phone. I don't see any snow in the forecast. Uniqlo store. They don't sell thongs in Uniqlo, rather the footwear or the underwear. <laughs> 
Wow, there's still a little bit of a line for a museum of ice cream. I heard their exhibit is really good though. Best uh, the winter storm might miss New York. It's possible. We'll have to uh, stay updated to the weather forecast. Here's the Prince Street subway station. Actually, the headways aren't too bad if you look at it. Five minutes for a train to Queens and one minute for Brooklyn. This is about normal. Brad O. Flaherty with 499 euro. Nothing better than coming home from work and watching your live streams with your girlfriend. Thank you so much, Brad and Brad's girlfriend, for watching. And thank you for the support, too. Appreciate it so much. Christine said, All the tourists left after the holidays. Yeah. January is not a popular month for people to come. And it's understandable. Why would you come in January? There's uh, no more Christmas decorations. It's colder than uh, December. Even people in New York, they travel in this, uh, January. So the city's even quieter. But for me, I don't really mind it. I'm content wherever I am. I've visited places where it's even colder than here or be unpopular to visit during a certain time. I visited New Orleans in August. I had a great time. I visited Boston in January and we had single digit temperatures in uh, Boston. All right, here we are. East Houston streets. I'm saying it the Texas way because I feel like uh, I feel like talking that way today. That's right. Howdy, partner. Make way for the cops. And now we've passed Houston Street. That's where the New York City street grid begins. So now we'll see them start to be numbered. And this is also the neighborhood of NoHo, north of Houston Street. Berlin 7 UND 40 with 10 euro. Love, health, and positivity from Berlin, Germany. We appreciate your video so much. Keep doing your thing, Pascal. Thank you, Pascal. Very much from Germany, sending my wishes back. We have pieces of your wall here in New York City. I know of three that we can see in person. 
uh, one in Battery Park City, another one inside the United Nations Park, and another one inside Ripley's, believe it or not. Those are the three pieces of the Berlin Wall on display. I think we can make it. Or maybe not. My shell's asking, what's the furthest you've traveled in New York State using public transportation? Uh, probably Metro North to Poughkeepsie. That's the last stop on Metro North. And I also went out to, uh, to East Hampton on the Long Island Railroad. I'm not really sure what distance is further from Grand Central Terminal to Poughkeepsie or from uh, Penn Station to East Hampton. I know Long Island where we are right now is the longest island in the United States. Long Island is, uh, part of it is New York City. Queens and Brooklyn are entirely on Long Island. Yes, a lot of people are mentioning the for lease signs, that's right. You see this all around now, and that's not good for economic activity. Jacqueline Guzman, you've always been confused about Brooklyn and Queens being on Long Island. It is confusing because uh, if you're referring to the landmass, an island, the definition of it is a landmass surrounded by water, which by definition, that's what it is. But when we refer to Long Island as, a, uh, as an entity, people really only um, related to the, uh, the counties of Nassau and Suffolk in New York State. Thank you so much, Dana Grants, 499 euro from Kildare Island, from Day and Brad. Love your videos, hope to see you in New York when we go there in June for your birthday, nice. Hopefully we can see you here too. Thank you so much. And the reason why I stopped, which is why it's so dangerous live streaming, I had the camera pointed forward. Look at this. I could have walked right into this caution tape and uh, onto this cement that hasn't completely dried yet. I would have had a, uh, my footprints in the cement here. The ABX girl says Long Island is Nassau and Suffolk County, not a part of New York City like Brooklyn and Queens. Yeah, I like I said, I like that's uh, referring to the political entity most people related to, Nassau and Suffolk County. But even in the history of uh, Nassau County, Nassau County was uh, part of Queens County at one point. It was the uh, western part of Queens County that split off from uh, from that part and became part of New York City. The eastern part of Queens County remained and that became Nassau County. So fun fact of history there. It really got a, a difference of political opinion when the uh, the Queens County Courthouse in Jamaica needed to be renovated and at that time they relocated it to Long Island City. So the people in Eastern Queens were like, hey, 
why should we allow these people in Western Queens to determine our, you know, our status here? That's too far. So they broke off and didn't join New York City. And there was like, I think two years that uh, there was Queens, New York City and Queens uh, County by itself. It was a strange time then. Bob says to be even more confusing no. as Long Island City in Queens. That's right. And that that goes back to the history as well. It was a city. Before it consolidated with New York City, it uh it actually was part of uh, Sunnyside Queens and Astoria combined. And the Queens County Courthouse is still in Long Island City in Court Square. And the county seat of Nassau is Mineola, which I've also uh, made a video about. And I also put a lot more history into that Mineola ep episode as well. Okay, so over here I'm going to turn off Broadway because uh, from here on in, Broadway is going to start curving over to the west side. When we pass by Grace Church, Broadway has a distinct curve until you get to Union Square. So I'm going to make a right here on uh, A Street and head up Stuyvesant place to 2nd Avenue. That's the most direct path to get to uh, to Queens. It's a shorter distance. Because I'm making this a commute and when you're commuting you don't want to uh, take longer paths than you need to. I did it um, earlier because <laughs> I want to show you Wall Street. really feeling this wind right now. Hopefully it doesn't affect the uh, phone's performance and cause it to freeze up. I will need to uh, connect a battery charger if that happens though. Thanks Maria. Thank you for all this interesting info action kid. My uncle uh, lived in Queens and he always puts Long Island on his envelopes. Oh good. Scott is saying, only problem with live streaming Long Island is it gets so dark at night you can't see anything. Well, uh, you should get your own light then. Alright, so here's 8th Street. Now I'm heading towards the east side. We're about an hour into this walk, so maybe another two hours or so to go until I get to Queens. Mm -hmm. 
me, it says two hours, maybe a little shorter than that. Le Dong saying, what was that cathedral you just turned off from? That was Grace Church. That's also a really old religious institution in New York. Rob Marias, 499, stay warm at home tomorrow morning, buddy. Thanks, Rob, appreciate the support. Thank you very much. Looks like the Astor Place Cube is still undergoing uh, construction or renovations. Square bed, thank you, 10 bucks. Get a hot coffee, warm up action kid. Don't push yourself too hard. Thanks for the stream. Thanks, Square Bet. Thanks for the support. So over here is 4th Avenue. This is the only stretch of the street where it's called 4th Avenue between uh, Astor Place and Union Square. The rest of it is called Park Avenue South or Park Avenue. Caution, bus is turning. Caution, bus is turning. Caution, I'm gonna hear this in my sleep now. All right, over here, this is where I'm gonna go. That's right, Hung Mao, the MTA. Caution, bus is turning. <laughs> Bob says, ever do summer streets walk when they close down Park Avenue? Yes, I uh, did it one year. And I, uh, this is pretty funny. This is before I vlogged my walks on uh, YouTube. I was playing Pokemon Go doing the summer streets walk i caught a lot of pokemon there and i actually walked park avenue all the way to the end with summer streets i went over the brooklyn bridge and then from there i walked back to queens i think i did like 25 miles that day just walking that was an adventure thanks wander luna with 9.99 thank you for all your great videos ak enjoy your weekend come back to cali soon yeah that would be nice to go back to Cali. I'll eventually do it someday. Thanks, Wanda Luna. <laughs> Hong Mao says, how cute Pokemon Go would have been nice to see, yeah. Too bad I didn't start my uh, YouTube streaming back then or Twitch stream. That would have probably gotten a lot of views. But my Pokemon Go adventures didn't really last too long because uh, honestly I got bored of the game really quickly because I was just walking too much and uh, I was enjoying my walks much more than I was enjoying catching Pokemon and uh, doing gym battles. So here's a street which is uh, unique in New York in that it goes diagonal compared to the rest of the street grid. It's Stuyvesant, Stuyvesant Street, not Stuyvesant Place as I called it earlier. So just taking this street like this saves me like maybe a minute or two of walking.
Tommy and says, great area, lots of food. Yes, we're very close by the popular St. Mark's Place. Claire, did Pokemon go inspire you to start vlogging my walks? No, it didn't. Poodle Mama, 1966, $1.99. We love your videos. Stay warm and safe. Thanks, Poodle Mama. I will. BB saying any rats today? Uh, not that I can see. Plus, it's kind of cold for them to be out here right now. They're warm-blooded. Be in the cold. Although, you'll be surprised because that other day I went by Central Park, we saw a whole family of them <laughs> passing right in front of me. But uh, I guarantee if you go down into the subway, you'll find them. And uh, I think the rattiest subway station has to go to Whitehall Street on the R&W. I think I've seen more rats over there than any other subway station in New York. If I could uh, give an award, that station will win the award, the rattiest subway station. I don't know what it is with that subway station, but they're there all the time. Me says they need to do something about the rat problem. Yeah, it's uh, it's tough because in a city of eight million people, people are always going to have food around for the rats, so they just reproduce, and there's always going to be uh, the underground infrastructure where all these rats can hide. And uh, there's a big rat problem in Central Park that I didn't really address the last time when I went there. Um, even during the daytime, I see rats there. And this isn't just in that section of the park where I saw the rats, but I see them all over the park in every single part of the park. The north part, the ramble, the west side, east side, south side, by the rocks. So uh, if they're out there in the daytime, you can just imagine how many rats are in Central Park if they're so brazen about coming out during the day. They just uh, have fun in Central Park. So this is 2nd Avenue now. I'm just gonna stay on 2nd Avenue for uh, a good portion of this walk. We're in the East Village. Tons of restaurants here. Claire says, the pigeon lady from home alone left too much food around. <laughs> it's also because in uh, Central Park, the rats are very, um, it's very easy for the rats to burrow and go inside the dirt. Those were the bell chimes for Stuyvesant Church.
I guess it's garbage collection day, yeah. but uh, like these well. high winds, sometimes they blow the trash around. Thank you to Mars Cologne for the super chat. $1.99, come to Puerto Rico, nice warm weather. That would be nice. Puerto Rico sounds like a fun place to visit. It's 6.01 p.m. right now, 36 Fahrenheit. Oh my gosh, temperature is dropping very rapidly. This afternoon it was 42, now it's 36. Angela says it's going to be very cold tomorrow. Yes, so I've heard. And then B045 saying negative 30 Celsius in Montreal. Yeah, that's uh, that's going to be uncomfortable. You know, you know, it's also uncomfortable. I was reading how there were some Tesla Model Y owners where the heating system completely failed. And some people, they had these cars up in Canada during those temperatures and it was like a life or death situation because the heat turned off in their car. So uh, something has Got to uh, change there. Yeah. Paul says negative 36 degrees Celsius in Toronto tomorrow. It's going to be cold. Really, really cold. I don't even know if electronics will work in that kind of cold. At least over here, we can stick a uh, phone charger and it'll still work, but the battery won't uh, charge, but the device will work. Thanks, Ryan Coke with Two Canadian. Love your videos, they're so relaxing to watch. Appreciate it, Ryan. Thank you so much. I think those church bells are coming over to my left. Don't know which church it's coming from though. So over to my left is a park that really isn't talked about too often, but it's Stuyvesant Square. And on both sides of the street, they're also called Stuyvesant Square. And uh, this might be one of the few public Christmas trees still around because I know uh, Madison Square Park, their Christmas tree is gone and the New York Stock Exchange tree, but this one is still up. It's uh, mid-January now. Now, a lot of places, they uh, start taking them down. Stuyvesant Square. There's also a Christmas tree over here. And also a statue of Stuyvesant himself over here. He was the director general of what was then New Amsterdam. New Amsterdam will become New York 
after the British took it over. But he's right there, Stuyvesant. He was called Pegleg by a lot of people. I don't think I'll uh, head over there. Robert says New Amsterdam had the best cafes. Cynthia says you went to Styerson High School a few blocks away. Um, I wouldn't say that's a few blocks away. It's on Chambers Street at the end. When I was walking by City Hall, that was the closest point to Styerson High School. Hey New York Life Vlog, welcome. Very nice to see everyone tonight. Nice to see you too, man. I'm saving a metro fare today by walking to Queens. Hey, Juana Alvarez, thank you for 99 cents. Appreciate the support. Thank you so much. a lot of medical offices and hospitals in this area. There's an orthopedic hospital right across the street from me, NYU Langone. Cynthia, original Stuyvesant High School is on 15th Street near 1st Avenue. You graduated in 1975 in New Orleans and Battery Park. I didn't even know uh, the original Stuyvesant High School was here, but thank you for letting me know. Wow. Yeah, that, now that I think about it, the current Stuyvesant High School is uh, way too modern for it to be there for its entire existence. Claire says, walking to Queens, Ken, you're crazy. How far is that? Well, uh, I've done it before. I've done longer walks as well. Even uh, live streams where I just walk around the city, I've done it for like three hours. So this isn't anything different. I haven't shown something like a traditional commute like this in a long time. And today I felt like doing it. Since it is a three day weekend as well, Darlene Mara Quinn with 499 can't wait to be there in a month. I hope to run into you. Thanks, Darlene. That'll be nice if you come and meet me too. Appreciate it, Darlene. You know who does these kind of walks pretty often? is a fellow YouTuber, Walking Commuter. And that's just in his name. He walks between Williamsburg, Brooklyn, and Manhattan all the time. But I need to do a Queens version. I haven't done this in a while. And I just saw that, uh, that kiosk, it says it's 35 Fahrenheit now.
I'm also going to do something because uh, it's getting really cold now and I don't have my heated gloves. But I do have something else that will help me tonight. I should have activated these earlier. Uh, the wind is coming from this direction, so I'll do it from the corner here. I have uh, hot packs that I could use because I have a feeling it's going to drop and my left hand is not going to uh, be good anymore. All right. This is what you do in cold weather. Hot hands, hand warmers. And there's a arrow here, it says tear here. You take these out, you shake them, and you get heat. And uh, another one, the other side, I'm gonna open two. There we go. So, you just do this for a little bit. I feel like the, uh, that Spanish instrument where you shake. I forgot the name of it. Is it, uh, I don't know. I forgot the name of that instrument. Put them in your pockets and, uh, put this glove back on oh it's called a maraca okay thanks for reminding me okay so uh, how these hot packs work is that it's just some uh, iron and when it oxidizes it produces heat Oh, here it is. Perfect. Uh, cater for peace. How long do the hot packs last? They say they're good for up to like eight hours. But you can, you can even stop the reaction by uh, putting them in a Ziploc bag or the seal, so it doesn't, uh, it doesn't use up the oxygen anymore. Because when iron rusts, it reduces heat. That's how it works. Bob says you have to check if Amazon has these hot packs. Yeah, that'll be a good place to check. I've had these hot packs for a while. I haven't used them, so it's a good idea to use them now. Cynthia says you don't know you could you didn't know you could stop the reaction. Well now you do Just put them in a sealed bag and you cut off the oxygen no more chemical reaction And then when you unseal the bag you have the heat again Mommy says put them in your gloves. Uh, you can, but there's an issue with that too because uh, once all the oxygen gets used up, there isn't any more oxygen for the iron to heat up, so it doesn't warm up anymore.
this bus will run along 2nd Avenue to South Ferry. Twenty third Streets. If you want to go to the Flatiron District, you go that way. B. Escobar says the ferry has to be cold. Oh, no, no doubt about that. It's going to be blowing into the cold harbor air. Bonnie says, will it melt the plastic bag? No, it doesn't. And uh, believe it or not, these hot packs they don't really get too warm. They just make barely enough heat that uh, prevents you from really freezing. Junior Jones, which part of the body do I place the hot packs? Uh, I put one in each pocket. I have one in my right pocket and one in my left. The left hand is holding my hot pack right now. It's keeping me from freezing up, so it's enough. Look at that. Look at how fast the temperatures are going to drop. By the time this is over, it might be in the 20s or close to freezing. Hey, Inca Hustler, yes. Nice to meet you earlier, too. That was awesome, man. Keep up the good work. Appreciate it. Inca Hustler, fellow YouTuber that we met there in uh, Lower Manhattan. This hot pack is uh, pretty good so far. You know what I should also do that I didn't do earlier? Is attach my uh, belt strap. Gotta make sure my phone doesn't fall here. Because I have a long distance to walk, I don't want all the weight to be on my shoulders. This makes it a lot more comfortable. Oh, this is nice. That's what you call a hole. Mike says I should wear gloves in the cold. I have one glove on the hand that I'm holding the camera with. The other one I don't like to use a glove on because I use it to navigate the uh, camera functions on the phone. It's much harder to do with a stylus. Which I actually didn't bring today because I didn't think the temperatures were going to drop this quickly.
That's the uh, New York Life Insurance Building, the one with the golden top. So I have 32 more blocks to go until I uh, reach the 59th Street Bridge. This is an area of Manhattan called Kipps Bay. Lots of residences. Michael Glenn hopes I have a groovy walk. Thank you. I think this phone will hold up too. Let's walk around that person and I'll walk directly into their path. Just trying to get around them slyly on the sidewalk, but that didn't really work. Oh my gosh. This block is a uh, not too pleasant. A lot of people who are mentally ill and uh, in need of help around here. That guy just uh, opened the door for someone and then spit on the ground. Sean says, be careful. Thank you. I'm very aware of what's going on. It's unfortunate that there's uh, people like that who are needed help and have mental issues, but that's been the case in New York. I feel like not enough goes into helping the uh, people with mental issues and who need help in our society. All right, let's announce our phone conversation to the entire world. <laughs> That's right, Graham. You heard him. Some people, they want their phone conversation and everybody to hear it. They don't have any shame at all. Okay, that's another thing you gotta be careful of. Uh, people on mobility vehicles operating their things and not being careful of the people around them. Good thing I got out of the way of that person.
Lots of interesting blocks that we, uh, we pass by here. But this is what happens in New York. We're near all the hospitals and uh, there's bound to be some activity here. That's right, it's green light. Yeah, and then we'll just figure it out. Yeah, thanks. You're sorry. It's okay. So here's an interesting, um, interesting place name. It's called Hill and Bay, and that name comes from the intersection of the two neighborhoods, Murray Hill and Kipps Bay. That could have been dangerous. That uh, person was reversing and there was another woman behind it. Always got to have your head on a swivel here in New York. You don't want to get hit by a car, by a motorized vehicle, a bicycle, running into someone. And and avoiding danger in general. Fantastic Frankie, would you suggest we wear a hard hat in New York? No, that's not necessary unless you uh, work in an area that needs it, especially construction. Sidewalk is closed. See, I don't like to walk on the scaffolding. That's just one more thing that you give up. But we really don't have a choice here. He's like, he's like, no wonder they're not successful. All right, 34 streets. We may be able to see the Empire State Building here. Hey, walks in Wall Street. Welcome to the stream. Happy Friday. Gentlemen's Club Advertisement. Okay. Grand opening. That's a way to advertise, right? They have the perfect timing. Empire State Building, right over there, right across 34th Street.
Claire Wedgworth, have I ever been scared walking through certain parts of New York? Yes, I have been, of course. Oh wow, Nightbot is saying it's 33 Fahrenheit now, 1 Celsius. What a drop in the temperature, oh my gosh, so crazy. Now we're just above the freezing point. This is the Queens Midtown Tunnel. This connects Midtown Manhattan with Long Island City and the Long Island Expressway. And we get a good angle of one Vanderbilt over here. That's on 42nd Street and Vanderbilt Avenue, right next to Grand Central Terminal. It's also got the best observation deck in the city, in my opinion. Cynthia Beale says something horrible happened the other day with a good Samaritan. I grew up in a tough area, but you're older, can't run so fast nowadays. I'm more careful where I walk. Yeah, Cynthia, I saw that too. It was a very disturbing article and a video. Someone uh, tried to be nice and help out someone sleeping on the streets. And uh, when they tried helping them out, the victim got attacked and had their wallet stolen. And that person got arrested for the same crime earlier, so... This is what happens in our city. I'm not here to say I'm proud of it. We need more help for these people. Rack saying he'll be out by the end of the weekend. Yeah, unfortunately, this is uh, what New York City has come to now. Catch and release criminals. People even get arrested for violent crimes. They uh, get put on the streets the next day just to commit more crimes against more people. They get arrested and uh, the same thing happens. So, uh, what I say to people who are here, you really have to look out for yourself and your community. Don't count on the city to, uh, to protect you because they may not be there. I know it sounds uh, negative, but that's the reality and I really hope it changes. Thanks Kane Rack with Five Canadian. Appreciate the support Kane. Thank you so much.
And you know, I don't like talking about politics, but this is one issue where, you know, some, you know, something's wrong when someone can just get arrested and then they just commit the same crimes the next day. It's like, where is there any sense of justice or any kind of help for these people? To me, I think any logical person can look at that and say, something is wrong. Almost to the busiest crosstown street in New York City, 42nd Street. The Mighty Bull, thank you so much for $5. Thank you, Action Kid. Appreciate it. The Mighty Bull. Thank you very much. Bob says appropriate to talk about it from time to time as it's part of the city traffic. I know. I can't just ignore it because I see it all, all the time. It's part of the city. I think at 42nd Street, I'll uh, make a right and I'll head over to 1st Avenue. That way I can show you the United Nations. Also, the, um, the Queensboro Bridge walkway is on that side of the street anyway. Unless they change it, I know uh, the city is working on uh, making the other outer roadway into a walking path and keeping the existing one for cyclists. Bob Kish, thank you for five dollars. Thanks for the long Walk tonight, interesting as always. Thank you, Bob. Appreciate it. Appreciate it so much, Bob. Thank you. All right. 42nd Street and some steam, too. We got to look up at the Chrysler Building, of course. One Vanderbilt in the background. Got the steam pipe too. Perfect scenery. Oh, this is nice. <laughs> Hi. Shiva Eden is playing, uh, playing along there.
Ramses? Have I visited Rockefeller Center if the tree's still up? I haven't visited it in a few days now. I don't know if it's still up there. I'm sure there's a New York City vlogger that'll walk by there sometime and we'll know if the tree is still up. But uh, from what I heard, I think it's the 16th, it was, which is when it's going to be taken down, which is uh, on Sunday. Thank you, Prima Plaza, with $2. Appreciate it so much. I don't want to read that comment out loud because uh, I'm not here to give investment advice. I think people should really uh, do their own. So up here is a community called Tudor City. There's a staircase up here to the Tudor City. And there's also an overpass here, which is well known for taking pictures of the Manhattan Henge. That's when the sunset and the sunrise align with the street grid of Manhattan. Uh, yesterday morning, I think, was the exact date of the Manhattan Henge sunrise. wonder what this scaffolding is for. Is it for uh, the Tudor City overpass here? And here we've got the United Nations on the other corner. And I think this tall one is the uh, UN Secretariat building. Once you're on the United Nations, technically you're not even in the United States anymore. You're on international land. And uh, if you go in there, I think you can even get your passport stamped with a United Nations passport stamp. I've also heard that the people at the UN who work here don't uh, pay taxes or they have a good tax agreement. But don't call me on that. I know they have a favorable tax arrangements for people who work at the United Nations because uh, they're not on U.S. soil. It's international territory. And I think uh, how it works is uh, people, they pay taxes to the U.S. government if they work here in New York City at the U.N. and then the U.N. reimburses them. Something like that. Thanks, Dallas guy with seven bucks. What's your favorite part of the city? Maybe a quiet place to see the sunrise. Oh no. My favorite place is Times Square. <laughs> Times Square is my favorite place. Also, take a look at this. That's a unique angle of the Chrysler Building and the Summit Building that uh, you don't see too often. I'm going to take a picture of that. That's really cool.
Now, uh, I doubt we'll be able to see much inside the UN garden, the memorial garden, but um, we'll try. I like to zoom into the piece of the Berlin Wall over there. Joseph Taylor with five dollars. Ken, are you taking the train to Roseville Island, walking there to Queens? No, I'm not. Thanks, Joseph. I'm taking the Queensboro Bridge. I'm doing this entirely on my feet today. I thank you, Joseph. Appreciate the support. When the city was a lot quieter, Times Square wasn't my favorite place anymore, but my own neighborhood of Astoria, Queens. That was my favorite place in the city. But now that uh, tourism has returned to the city and some more life is out, Times Square is my favorite place in the city again. Especially after experiencing New Year's Eve in Times Square. I mean, come on, that's so New York right there. That's the U.S. mission to the United Nations across the street. Bugging out 23 sounds kind of nerdy. Uh, you'd like to visit the United Nations someday. Uh, yeah, I've been inside this building before. When I was in high school, I was in... Uh, United Nations Club and we got a trip to see the United Nations one day. It was a fun little uh, club to be in. We had like little debates with each other and uh, we learned all about how it was organized and everything. It's kind of cool. Alright, let's head over to this fence over here. Let's see if we could peek into this garden and see if anything's lit up. You know what, I think we'll be in luck because there's some lamps on there. I'll wait till we get further down before I try zooming in. We'll try to uh, see the Berlin Wall. I think the Berlin Wall is the coolest part of this park here. I just wish it was open to the public. I've always wanted to go inside this park just to look at all the art and architecture. All right, I think we could uh, zoom in from here. This one I like, and the Berlin Wall is over there. Can't really see it too well because it's fuzzy and grainy and no light. But we can see the Pepsi Cola sign in Long Island City. M. Kathy Kish, who's allowed in the park? Uh, that I'm not sure. I guess the people who work here and uh, visitors, maybe. I don't think anyone can just go into this park now without permission.
Oh, that's funny. Ian Garner, that's oddly funny. All the time when it was a wall, it was lit up very well. Yeah, they didn't want people to climb it and go to the other side. Of course, the United Nations uh, should have a piece of the Berlin Wall. Makes sense. I have uh, 11 more blocks until I get to the bridge. I do have to go on 60th Street to walk across it though. It's still 33 degrees, and I'm still feeling it. This is an area of Manhattan called Midtown East. I think I want to cross over here. The light's just about to change anyway. So far I'm doing good on battery too. I'm at 42% battery and the stream's been running for uh, two hours and 15 minutes already. I may not even need to charge this thing. Nivea Mendez, I'm really walking the bridge. That's right. It's gonna be even colder when I'm on the bridge. I might even take out my flashlight for the first part of it because uh, that incline in the beginning isn't really lit too well. It's more for the people coming down to uh, see me. The people going up, they're slow and uh, if they hit me, it won't do as much damage as the people coming down. Photos around New York, how the hand warmer still working well. No issues here. Nice and toasty. Action. Hi, what's up? All right. Got a shout out from a viewer walking down the sidewalk.
and once again I gotta bring this up all the time I think everyone should have a flashlight on them because you never know when you're gonna use it and using it just may save you from serious injury and may help someone else from serious injury Thanks so much, Angela Washington, 999. Are you going to drive the bumper cars on Ice and Bryant Park this weekend? You can't use your phone or camera, so need a buddy. I'm not too sure, Angela. I'll be uh, busy this weekend, but maybe I could come by and look at it. I know what's going on. All right. 51st Street. We're on the last streets of Manhattan now before I cross over into Queens. Hello. Oh, Angela, you think the bumper cars will be there until February? 27. Oh, so we have a lot of time. That'll be fun to check out. Yeah, Gerard, I don't want to think of that scenario, but... In an emergency, you can do it. Fifty third Streets. Now this bridge I think it normally takes me around like forty minutes to cross. Busy, busy street. Also, a special shout out to our moderators today. I know it's been a busy night with the chat flying at times. Claire says, 40 minutes, you thought it would take like 10. That bridge alone will kill you. Hey, I said it was gonna be a long stream. I said it's gonna take about yeah. three hours. Look at this, there's a lot of outdoor seating here and people are uh, dining outside at the Greats of Craft. The Greats of Craft, what a play on the name of the, uh, the Shakespeare play, The Greats of Wrath. Wait, was it written by Shakespeare? I don't even know. I know it's the name of a play though. Is there a car coming? Nope.
Oh, it's Steinbeck. Oops. Yeah, There's a book. But even that, all of that YouTube stuff? You can tell that uh, I didn't really pay attention too much in English class. I know he wrote of Mice and Men, John Steinbeck. <laughs> scary, scary. These motorized vehicles don't really belong on the sidewalks at high speed like that. <laughs> Sixth Street, 57, 58, and 59. Those are the last streets remaining in Manhattan. Joseph saying, You hope the wind's okay on the bridge? I hope so too. I hope so too. Well, that driver had no patience for this one here. And understandable, they didn't know which lane to be in. This is the last major crosstown street I'm going to walk across. Um, I've had to... Uptown NYC, have I ever thought of walking from Battery Park all the way up to 220th Street in Manhattan? Uh, no, I haven't done that, but I've done the reverse. I've walked Broadway from the mainland of the United States to Battery Park. It was on a live stream that I did that in February 2020, I believe. It was, uh, I think, over six hours long I walked the entire length of Broadway in uh, Manhattan. traffic on 58th yep there is you gotta do the little bit of a peak and if there's no traffic coming then you go Carol Hunter what's the longest street in New York and how long is it I think it's uh, I think it's Broadway 
and it changes names it becomes a uh, part of the uh, Albany Post Road so if you count that along with its, all its names then that's the longest street in New York pretty much goes all the way up to the capital of uh, New York State I know the longest street in um, in Queens is Northern Boulevard. And here we are, the Queensboro Bridge. AKA the 59th Street Bridge and the official name is the Ed Koch Queensboro Bridge. Also, there's a Trader Joe's under the Queensboro Bridge and TJ Maxx. And there's the Roseville Island Tram. We'll probably be seeing another one when I walk across. The pedestrian path and the cycling path is up here. Oh, there's a Starbucks under there now. And uh, over there, there used to be a Bed Bath & Beyond over there, but that closed up. All right, now, uh, now I have to walk to the Queensboro Bridge. Oh, this is new. I didn't see this before. There's a sign here, it tells you walking instructions. Good, uh, good public infrastructure there. As you can see, it's a little bit dark over here. I mean, uh, it's not overbearingly dark, but still a flashlight helps. Over here, I don't need to use it because uh, this is pretty safe. Most of the people will ride their bikes over to the right side. Jackie Smith, you love the view driving from Long, uh, Manhattan to Long Island City, but you never walked it. You know, um, the other side where the cars are able to drive on right now, the other outer roadway, that's going to be converted to a walking path. And this side will remain for cyclists. Tony Crack says, be careful with the bikes coming down. Absolutely. Especially over here in the uh, the hairpin turn over here, or the horseshoe turn. This is really dangerous. What I like to do, get my flashlight and make myself very visible. Right here. Or you can just peek around the corner like this. Make sure no one's coming. And then shine my light this way. The cyclist is supposed to be on the, the right side there. I'm gonna shine at my feet because here, as you can tell, a little bit dark. I have it at my feet now. So they see me. That way the cyclist, hopefully they'll move over to the left. W2N 
and M as you wind the oncoming drivers. You don't want to do that either. See, here's another one. Ethan says, watch out with the bikers. Yes, you do. Here's someone coming. I hope they move over. What are you doing? That is too close. Oh my gosh. I didn't even want to continue walking. I was ready to like jump up on the barrier there. That's not even supposed to be here. Those are the, uh, the gas powered or the electric scooters that are supposed to belong on the roadway. And I had my light out too. Over here is where it gets tricky too, because there's a turn and sometimes the, the vehicles that like to go on the right lane. I'm all, all the way to the left. I'm actually going to move over to the center a little bit because if someone's all the way to the right and makes that turn, you won't be able to see them. This is a good area to use strobe mode. That's not allowed on the bike path either. Strobe mode. Yeah, Ian, that's right, two motorcycles. They're on here and uh, they're not supposed to. I'm telling you, get one of these if you don't have one. You need a portable flashlight with you at all times. You never know when it might come in handy, like today with these motorcycles and scooters. I mean, I probably would have been okay without them, but it helped me be more visible there. I used the strobe mode and uh, made myself well aware of where I was at the top. Claire says, who would have thought the bridge would be the most dangerous part of the walk? Yeah, it's, it's kind of crazy here. That's why, that's why they're separating the two paths. The other side is going to be for walking and this side is for the cyclists and the scooters and the other uh, motorci motorized vehicles. Here's York Avenue We're looking right down on it. Gary Wardell, you have a flashlight on your phone. Yeah, you do, but What's going to happen when your phone runs out of battery, it doesn't turn on, or you have to decide between having your phone uh, charged or using the flashlight? It's better to have a dedicated device that you can just pull out and use. Now you know why I carry a flashlight with me. There's the Roosevelt Island tram up there. And the moon's coming out.
Rob says I should also wear reflectors. Yeah, I can throw a reflective vest on myself. That helps. But then again, it's hard to wear a reflective vest over my backpack like this. It makes my body shape really irregular so it doesn't fit. Here comes another motorcycle. Look at this guy. That's not allowed here either. They can't rearrange this bridge fast enough, I'm telling you. We really need that side opened up for the walkers. Because even uh, right now, with barely anyone on the bridge, I'm getting close calls and getting buzzed with the light on. Alright, we're done climbing the bridge now. Now it's a straight path. That's Roosevelt Island down there. That's a pretty bright light on this side of the pathway. I'm going to put my light on too and make mine bright. Hopefully they move over to that side. I'm sure that guy saw me, but he was still a little too close. This is why I don't really like crossing this bridge anymore whether by foot or by wheels because of this configuration here. It's gotten too lawless, I should say. People don't really respect each other's personal space on the bridge and uh, it gets hairy here. I prefer to take the subway in and out of Manhattan from Queens. But once they reconfigure this bridge, I think I'll be uh, taking this a lot more often. I only do this seldomly. And now you know why. I think there's someone cycling at me with no lights or a very Oh no, that's someone running. Okay. So my light on, just in case. people running on this bridge I feel bad for them too it's windy and they gotta compete with all these people on the wheels I'm afraid to look behind me because sometimes when you look behind you you change directions and you move a few inches to the right or the left I don't want to get look at that 
I don't want to get smacked by one of those dudes overtaking someone else. Zing Cross saying so dangerous. Yup. It's a big problem on this bridge. When this uh, bike lane first got installed, it wasn't too bad. It wasn't this crazy. There weren't too many people on it and people coexisted peaceably. But in the recent years, this bridge has just gotten so much more busy that they need to open up that other side. And they're, they're reconfiguring it. I, I thought they were supposed to open it last year, but they haven't yet. I don't even want to turn my camera over to the left and show you the views because uh, just stopping may distract someone coming up behind me at high speeds and make them sway or whatever or hit me. It's better to be predictable than be like, oh, let's stop, let's look at the view. That gets you in trouble. I guess I could do this, just turn my my hand like this but even when I do that I uh, I move a few inches to the right and look at that that was close too yeah Bob they reconfigured the Brooklyn Bridge but not this bridge yet yep I can't wait to get off this what the heck fudge man fudge all right I'm gonna turn my light on I don't care just gonna shine it behind me. It's like, hi, I'm here. Don't buzz me within a few inches or feet, whatever. Thank you, you gave me a lot of space. That guy had all the space in the world, a complete other lane, and he goes buzz me over here. That's another thing too, Cal6. People don't use the bell or say on your left, on your right. I'm just shining my light behind me to the side. Thanks, Holly S with $10. Keep pushing through AK, I'm almost there. Yes. I want to get off this darn bridge. I should have taken the uh, the Williamsburg Bridge. It would have been better and walk through Brooklyn instead of Manhattan. You see uh, what that guy did? I'm looking behind him. No one's here. He was okay, but the problem is he he went in my lane over here. What if someone tripped like this and fell over? You would have gotten hit. So sometimes you think you give people enough space, but anything can happen. Someone can stumble, especially over there, that grating, and you get seriously injured. Robert says Williamsburg Bridge is much wider. Yes, it's my uh, my favorite bridge to walk or ride my bike across. They, that one is uh, actually well designed. Stylish bunny, do I have option for strobe light on my flashlight? Yes, I do. I used it right now even. Mary, thank you for the five bo five dollars. Keep letting your light shine. Thank you. I have it shined beside me. Uh, we're 
we're going down now. We're walking over Queens. says perfectly lit up you don't need a light in this section yeah it is but uh when you have people buzzing you so close like that at least at least this light makes a statement makes you a little bit more visible Alright, my uh, hand is actually getting pretty cold. I'm gonna put my other glove on, so... No one's behind me, that's good. Alright, other glove was on, and now I could use my flashlight. The downside is I won't be able to scroll back on the phone, but... I think that's the least of my worries right now is to address people and flip the camera around. Hey, hey, hey! Give me more space, buddy. That was better. That was better, bud. It looked like he was cutting a little too close, too. The light does work. What the heck? Another motorcycle. someone riding the bike up they're okay they're gonna give me space I can tell Seth says seems like you know that'll be sketchy yes I did know but this is what happens on this bridge I have to cross it to document it right this is why I don't like crossing this bridge. Whether as a cyclist, a scooterist, or walking it, because now it's just gotten unbelievably crazy. And they need to open up the other side, like I said, and get it open pronto, like now. That would help so much. Tom says these sides used to be for cars. Yeah, the the other side is for cars right now. This side uh, used to be for cars long ago, but I think in the in the late 90s they opened this up for uh, people walking and cycling. Elsa saying do they ever get fined uh, sometimes they do the police have done sting operations where they put police officers on the base of the bridge and pulled over people on those uh, on those big scooters and the motorcycles but uh, it's clear that they don't really do enough
manage to use a needle from the other side for cyclists. Well, uh, this side is going to remain for cyclists. The other side is going to be for walking. Julie says DOT's current plans call vaguely for this new pedestrian pass to open sometime in 2022. Okay. How about we make it tomorrow? <laughs> It'll be so easy to open it up tomorrow. All you gotta do is block it off for cars, just a immovable barrier, put like black tape over all the car signage, and that's it. Doesn't need someone to get seriously injured which has happened already for uh, the city to make it go faster doesn't make any sense they don't need to produce all these new signs and whatever to say this for walking just get one of those barriers that you just forklift over put black tape over all the existing signs and then put like handwritten ones saying walking that's it. It's all you need. And then put up the signs later. David Bowman, Queensboro Bridge is dangerous bridge to walk on and he used to live in there. Super dangerous. I don't like this bridge at all anymore. And it's too bad because uh, it's pretty much the only way that people from Queens can get into Manhattan unless they take the Triborough Bridge. But that's kind of out of the way to Midtown. Alright, I'm on 20% uh, battery now. I just got a low power warning. I closed the notification. Here, here's another issue. I've reported this to the city probably like years ago, back in like 2017 or whatever, and they've referred to Con Edison, the utility company, and they're saying that it's their problem, not the city's problem. There's like some kind of issue here. So. When is that going to get fixed too? The lighting in that area. Hey, there's the end train. All right. It's going pretty slowly too, so you can see all the passengers on the train. Doesn't look too busy right now. Oh, now it is. just turning us into an old angry head. Well, I wouldn't put it that way. But it's getting me a little bit annoyed with the layout. All right, finally I can see the end of this darn bridge. 
can't wait for it to be over, this darn bridge. Uh, we got the other train here. Perfect time. That's even more dangerous than the people going down. Look at this. There's no lights at all over here. I'm going to shine my light behind me. What the heck is up with that, man? Ride with some lights. I can't see you. Well, I, I could see you, but other people can't. It's harder to hear you, to see you. That person doesn't have any lights either. Come on, I want this bridge to end already. Oh my gosh. It's the bridge of death. That's what it is. And uh, just because you're done, everything is out of the clear because people think, oh, it's the end of the bridge. They'll speed up around this corner and hit you. So you gotta be careful that no one's like turning and making it too quick of a left turn because that could be an issue too. So what I'm going to do is actually go over here, wait on the edge here, and look behind me, and there's no one coming, and then quickly move over across the way. Because you got to really take into account all the reckless people out there. All right. All right. O-M-F-G Now I can just breathe, be the sigh of relief Exactly, Bob <sighs> It's anxious all the way across Now this is Crescent Street in Long Island City I'm just going to walk up this now I know, everyone's uh, saying, what a relief, I'm crazy dude. He needs to fix that bridge now and open up the other side instead of stalling. Because I think it was supposed to be open last year, but I don't know what happened with that. And we're on 17% battery with the live stream going for over three hours now. Wow. I think I'll have enough battery to uh, get back. That'll be awesome. Lena says I have a super chat. I do. I'm looking back. Uh, life begins at 40 truck, 999. Thanks for the long walk. Thank you so much. Appreciate the support, man. Thank you. Oh! 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 That hurt my toes. Oh! Freaking! What the heck is this? 
Ow. Ow, ow, ow. You need steel-toed boots for this. Oh my gosh. Ow. Ooh. Escobar says, I'm okay. Yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> that was a bad raise of the sidewalk. Ooh. That just hurt for like a few seconds, but I'm back into it again. Oh man. My feet are used to that already, so. Crazy Otter says, don't skateboard on Crescent Street. Yeah. I almost did a crescent and flip flopped on my side there. <laughs> We're at 40th Avenue. All right. POV says maybe you should take the train. That's what I usually do. I never take that bridge. I don't like that bridge anymore. Until they fix that bridge, I don't think I'll walk it or cycle across it or scooter across it until they do. My twin sister says, that's dangerous, you better check your foot when you get home. No, I'm fine. That just was painful to hit it, but my toes and foot are okay. I don't feel anything anymore. Thankfully, my shoes are good quality. Adora says, am I walking to a store? Yes, that's the goal. I'm in Long Island City now. It's not too far until Astoria. Emil says, you need a personal injury attorney, don't brush it off. Well, the issue with that is, uh, I don't think I got injured there. I don't feel anything, and I don't really think there's uh, anything to sue for if you didn't get any injuries. The best you can do is notify the city that that happened, or the property owner that they need to fix their sidewalk. Thank goodness I'm in uh, as good shape as I am because uh, that stumble on that sidewalk crack may not have ended as well for somebody else. Eddie says I fell. No, I didn't fall. I just tripped and I didn't I didn't fall down. I think my toes are okay and my foot's fine. I recovered myself.
If I was in big, big pain right now, I wouldn't be still walking. It wasn't that bad. I was just stunned. That's right. But you never know. Anything's possible. I could be on adrenaline and not feel anything. It's cold out, so it's numb. But really, I think 98% uh, chance I'm fine and nothing happened to me. Eighth Ave. Seth says action kid on the bridge of death coming to a theater near you. That's right. That will be a movie that's pretty fun. Julie asks if I live in Astoria. Yes, I do. I do live in Astoria. I'm also thinking about getting something to eat around the Broadway area, which is not too far from here. Elias asks if I'll stream tomorrow. Yeah, there's a good chance I'll stream tomorrow. Now you know what uh, you've missed out on by taking the train instead of walking all the way from Wall Street to Queens. We saw, saw a lot of good things today and some bad things too, like that bridge there. be ready for the cold if I'm streaming. I sure will be ready for the cold if I'm out tomorrow. I'm used to it by now. you appreciate taking Q60 or Q32 across the bridge of F. Yeah, you can do that. Those are the... What? Are That's me. Hi. Oh, awesome. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Take care. Fellow viewer. So, um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, the Q32, Q60, and the Q101 are the buses that go over the Queensboro Bridge. A 
Emilio Silva, where are we going? I'm uh, taking Crescent Street up to Broadway and I'll wrap this live stream up. See, I told you more or less this live stream is going to be about three hours long and uh, we're already past the three hour mark. I knew it was going to take longer because I needed to stop and explain stuff. I wasn't uh, power walking. Oh good, green light just for me. Adora says Q101 goes to Rikers. Don't take that bus. Uh, no, that one doesn't go to Rikers. You're talking about the Q100. And even the Q100 is fine to take. I've taken that bus so many times. The 101 will end at uh, Steinway Street and Hazen Street. The 100 will go across to Rikers Island though. And I've taken it to Rikers Island too because I wanted to see what it's like and uh, <laughs> I thought so Rikers Island for those of you who don't know that's a that's the biggest prison complex in New York City and it's slated to close so I wanted to make a video there one day not of the prison itself because I knew like that's probably like out of boundaries and you can't record inside a prison of course but I thought hey maybe I could take the bus across and maybe walk around the island a little bit not go into the prison and like show the parking lot and Queens from the parking lot well that wasn't a good idea because uh, I couldn't even do that because before you even get off the bus they have the corrections officers board the bus and say tell you all the rules of Rikers Island no recording and uh, you need to be searched and this and that so I was like darn it and I couldn't even record that on the bus I had to get searched by a dog and everything and I just took the bus right back to Queens <laughs> So that's what happens at Rikers Island. I should be able to make this light here on 35th Avenue. Yeah, Whitney, forget that. Yep. Once you're on that island, you're subject to all the rules and uh, you can't even linger on that island unless you're visiting someone or you work there or whatever. You have to have official business there. You can't record videos on their island. I think I even uh, made a video about it. Yeah, I did. Um, if you look it up, I explained my experience on Rikers Island. And I said, oh, I'm not falling for that again. Ha ha ha. Fool me once. I'll never get fooled again. Now I'm super aware of all the cracks in the sidewalk. Yeah, Jamie, nasty trip pad. That one was a bad one too. I caught that one, that's right.
Domino's Pizzeria. I know the trees are where you gotta be careful of because they uproot the sidewalks and make them uneven. Here's another big tree that uh, shifted the sidewalk a little bit. I know, Raul, they didn't leave the light on for the pizza guy. Probably looking for the address, too. I don't really uh, think New Yorkers should be ordering Domino's, though, because there's a lot of other local pizzerias that are better than Domino's, but hey, Domino's is still around for a reason. That's like ordering Taco Bell in Los Angeles. Or Sparrow in uh, New York City, right? Or I don't know, what else? Uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken in Kentucky. But uh, then again, I don't even know if Kentucky's known for fried chicken, so. <laughs> Bob Kish says Korean fried chicken is the best. Yeah, I love that Korean fried chicken in the video I did. The banchan. There's also a good fried chicken place in Queens called Mad for Chicken. They started off in Flushing, but now they have a few locations, including um, in Astoria on 30th Avenue. A Mad for Chicken location. And you know what? I'm at 6% battery and I'm only a block away until I get to Broadway where I'm gonna wrap up this live stream. So I uh, made it across the bridge and from downtown Manhattan, three hours and 20 minutes and my phone's still going. So this is uh, rather incredible. <laughs> it lasted the entire way, the entire journey. I can't believe it. I thought my phone would die by now, but miraculously, it's on. And I think uh, it's meant to be. And all this food talk is making me hungry. I'm in the perfect spot to get food. So, perfect. That's the iPhone 13 battery. Thanks so much. Watch and learn $1.99. Check out your live stream soon. Times Square. Excellent. Thank you so much. Okay. Tons of food options here on Broadway and Astoria. And that was a walking commute from Wall Street, Manhattan to Queens in uh, almost three and a half hours. And that same trip on the subway would probably take you an hour. So I could have saved two hours and a half by taking the subway instead. But this is where I'm gonna end this folks. It's been a pleasure having you all to watch this live stream. 
Thank you so much for joining. Thank you for all the support. Thanks to all the moderators for helping keep everybody happy and positive. And I hope to see you next time. Take it easy, folks. It's been awesome. Bye. So it's much safer.